Okay. I'm hoping this is, <clears throat> uh, and I'm hoping that you're hearing me. Uh, my name is Matt Schaff. I am an engineer with O3 World, uh, which is a creative agency. Uh, I, I think we're calling ourselves a digital project uh, product agency in Fishtown, Philadelphia. Um, and today I'm going to talk to you about a, a talk entitled Lost in CMS Translation, Custom Plugin Development Across Craft, Drupal, and WordPress. Um, before I jump in, uh, I would ask you to save your questions to the end. And um, as a warning, this uh, talk can get kind of intense in terms of code, but I uh, am trying to um, step through it as methodically and clearly as possible. <clears throat> Happy to at, answer any questions about it at the end. Okay, let's begin. So very recently, O3 built a CLI tool, a command line interface tool to interact with all of our client sites. It's called O3 CLI. It does a lot of things, but one of them is um, visual regression tests. And uh, we wanted to um, uh, do visual regression, regression tests against all of our sites, uh, all of our clients' websites. And that required us to solve this problem. We needed to have for this CLI tool regardless of CMS. So the solution uh, to that problem that we devised and built and deployed is a plugin that does the same thing for multiple CMSs. But here's the question. how can I translate a single plugin across major CMS frameworks? And these are three of the frameworks, uh, the main frameworks that we use, uh, the three main CMSs at O3. This is Craft CMS, Drupal, and WordPress. And throughout this presentation, I'm going to be uh, organizing them like this, just alphabetically. So the answer to this question is the subject of the talk. So get ready. Here are the basics. Um, <clears throat> let's walk through some just summary details about each CMS. First, Craft CMS is proprietary. Um, that means that you actually have to pay for a license if you want to use the pro uh, version as opposed to the free version, whereas Drupal and WordPress are completely open source to use their core code. Um, the language is the same, which is one reason why we can have this presentation. They're both, they're all three are using PHP. Now, only two of the three CMSs we're talking about today use frameworks. These are web frameworks um, uh, for uh, web development. Uh, Craft uses uh, something called Yi, uh, Drupal uses Symfony, and WordPress does not use a framework. It is just pure WordPress. Templating languages. So PHP developers like Twig, and Craft CMS and Drupal come with Twig built in, whereas WordPress comes with PHP built in as a templating language. Um, that's why you know PHP was devised in the first place in the first place to intercalate logic and uh, HTML markup in the same file. But you can actually install contributed plugins that would give you uh, Twig templates for WordPress. The initial release date, Craft came out very recently, 2013, its first version. Whereas Drupal has been around for 20 years and WordPress started in 2003. Uh, the plugin pricing model for both Craft and WordPress, there is a plugin store uh, and you can you know, buy them. Some of them are free. Um, whereas Drupal, by default, all modules, all contributed modules are uh, open source. Whereas you can go on places like Code Canyon and buy uh, contributed modules and contributed themes, particularly the themes for Drupal, uh, you, can, you can buy them. Now, Craft and Drupal can be composer managed. Craft actually requires composer management, whereas WordPress uh, does not. Uh, there is no composer management possibility with WordPress. I think they're talking about it, but um, uh, Craft actually requires compo composer management, whereas it's possible with Drupal. Composer uh, is a um, dependency management tool like NPM is for JavaScript, but Composer for PHP. 
market share. Kraft is, uh, represents 0.23%, less than 1% of the market. Drupal, about 2%. WordPress being around for so long, uh, 28%. Um, and the name for plugin or module is different across the CMSs. Kraft says plugin, Drupal says module, WordPress says plugin. All right, let's start with the basics. <clears throat> Starting with Kraft alphabetically, um, again, this is, uh, we're talking PHP starting now, but these, we're, we're going to go slowly and get more hardcore. Uh, first off, conditions that span multiple lines in Craft should have logical operators at the end of lines, uh, as opposed to the beginning. Use type hinting and new line open parentheses. Now, now I'm including some, some, uh, coding guidelines that, that I found stuck out to me because they are different than other, uh, other um, CMSs. And so I tried to compute the diff and show you what, what you should remember about this or that framework uh, differently. So um, Craft seems to care about these new line open parentheses, others don't. Uh, and then lastly, chain method calls should, be, uh, should each be placed on their own line with the um, <clears throat> dash arrow operator at the beginning of each line. For more information, click that link. Again, or actually I haven't said this before, but, but uh, this presentation will be available um, to uh, CMS Philly at the end. Okay, Drupal. You don't need a file doc lock in a class file um, versus other, uh, other uh, CMSs want it. Uh, else and else if should be on new lines. And this is different than craft. The same line open parentheses, or at least open parentheses, should be on the same line as your, your method uh, creation. And importantly for Drupal, type hinting right now is optional, but they're talking about changing that for Drupal 9. OK, WordPress. Uh, this is perhaps the most important coding guideline that I can tell you today, which is when you're developing a custom plugin in WordPress, you must use the long array syntax, at least right now, because WordPress uh, plugins are supposed to work uh, with PHP 5.3, um, which uh, didn't have the new uh, short array syntax with these brackets. Else and else if should be on the same line as the previous closing. And use tabs, not spaces. All right, let's look at the plugin directory. Starting with craft. Here is all you need in order to have a plugin working with Craft. Uh, what you see here is just the plugin folder with a child source folder. And inside that child source folder is a PHP file called plugin. And in the root directory of the plugin folder is composer.json. So the plugin.php uh, file is what you need to hook into craft events and register your services at runtime. This is when your code is actually uh, responding to an HTTP request to return some kind of uh, HTML file. Whereas uh, the composer.json controls dependencies upon auto loading during installation of your, your plugin. Um, and we'll talk about that more uh, soon. Okay, so if we dig into this plugin directory, we get to the plugin file. Here is the very basic components of your plugin.php. Sometimes <clears throat> um, the namespace is agency name, plugin name. You'll see that across uh, craft plugins. Um, here, I'm just writing a namespace CMS Philly uh, for um, for those who don't know, namespaces are a means to prevent class collisions to effectively create long class names for your plugin so that no one else has created a, a plugin with the same name uh, in the entire system. And um, you can actually name your class anything as long as the name matches the file name. And we'll talk about why that is soon. And the public init function or method is where you register and events uh, at runtime. It's much like, for those who are familiar with WordPress, the add action on init hook that you would use. Um,
All right, we are uh, digging further into our plugin directory for a craft plugin, our CMS Philly craft plugin. Um, and what you see is this composer.json file. And composer.json is required by Composer in order to uh, do a bunch of things. Uh, importantly, one of them is when you run Composer install, this uh, require um, property at line six uh, is what's responsible for telling Composer what to download. So Composer install uh, causes Composer to download any dependency you put in require. Now, I told you we'd talk more about namespaces and auto-loading. Um, Craft uh, completely delegates to Composer all auto-loading functionality. And uh, importantly, in your composer.json, you have this property called auto-load, and P, uh, within that PSR4, and within that, your namespace to uh, directory mapping. This maps the namespace to the directory for PSR4 auto-loading. Um, and this saves us from having to run require class name PHP every time we instantiate a class, which is what uh, we used to do in the old days. So <clears throat> importantly, so PSR4 stands for um, PHP standards and recommendations, number four, PHP standards and recommendations are produced by the PHP interoper, uh, interoperability group, uh, which produces a bunch of PSRs, and one of them relates to auto-loading. Uh, and um, this loads all of the relevant PHP classes that any of your services in your plugin might need to use. Um, and all that you need to do here is note what the root directory is. We're gonna talk about auto-loading more in Drupal, but it's it's very similar, just controlled by Drupal, not Composer. And last thing I want to say about Composer.json for Craft is when you install the module in the Craft database with the dot slash Craft plugin install handle, that function that you'll see when you're developing a, uh, a plugin in Craft, it looks for this value in Composer.json. So make sure to know what that value is, for, uh, that handle value within the extra property. And if your plugin file that we talked about earlier is just named plugin.php, you don't actually need this class property, but it's just there to show you. Okay, the last thing you need to do is you need to tell Craft about your plugin. <clears throat> so what you would do is add your plugin as a repository in your project roots composer.json. And on the right, you see an example of how that can be done. It can be done in, in really two main ways. Uh, one is you publish your repository uh, to a GitHub repository, and you pull that down um, uh, by requiring it, much like any other dependency you'd require with Composer. Or what you see on the right is uh, a another way, which is much easier in my opinion, when you're not ready to publish your, your plugin yet, and uh, you have it in your um, somewhere with respect to your project directory, you can create a, a symlink repository, which is what that's doing. And it automatically, <clears throat> on Composer install, brings your uh, custom plugin that you have in your root directory into the vendor folder so that Craft can understand your plugin. Um, so once you do that, you run Composer install. It does what I just said, puts, puts the, your plugin in the vendor directory. And then you need to actually tell the database about it. So you run this dot slash craft plugin install your plugin handle. That's craft. On to Drupal. So Drupal, as we said, they don't have plugins. They have modules. So here we are looking at the structure of the Drupal module directory, a, a custom module that you might create or might uh, convert into a contributed module. I have um, written above this directory uh, a proposed path for your for your module. However, if you put your CMS Philly module in anything under modules, uh, it doesn't have to be in a, the subdirectory custom, and you do everything I, I uh, outline here, uh, Drupal will still module. What you see here is uh, 
a a structure that's very similar to craft where you have the uh, the root directory of your module and then a subdirectory source uh, and in the root directory you have a uh, a module with the same name, or I'm sorry, you have a file with the same name as the module directory, but .info.yml. And that is the only required file to install a Drupal 8 module. You can actually delete the source folder, you can delete the .module uh, file, and you would still be able to install it in the, um, uh, the Drupal extensions page in your admin or via the, uh, the Drush um, command line interface that comes with Drupal. So the source directory, why I'm showing it here is that it's going to matter in a second. The, this is the place for object-oriented code. This is the place for classes. Um, Drupal natively auto-loads anything in this directory. And it's also using this, what I talked about before, the PSR4 uh, specification to understand uh, namespaces and mapping namespaces to file directories. It doesn't require Composer in order to do this. So you don't have to understand Composer in order to uh, create plugins or modules in Drupal. And the dot module folder will be uh, familiar to anyone who has built custom Drupal modules in Drupal 7 or earlier. And this is the place for procedural hooks. OK, here is the only uh, required stuff that you need to have a working module in Drupal 8, and it is a single uh, .info.yml file, and it uh, requires things like this, or lines like this. So what is YML? YML is YAML, uh, and YAML stands for right now, it used to stand for something different. Uh, YAML ain't markup language. It is a human readable abstraction on JSON, uh, and that's JavaScript object notation. Um, and YAML is popular among DevOps op uh, engineers, and it's all over Drupal. So understanding YAML opens your doors toward uh, building custom Drupal modules. So just to show you what YAML can do versus what is more old school. So that's YAML on top and JSON on the bottom. YAML, I would agree, is more readable, but it's really up to um, interpretation. Uh, JSON on the bottom is more lines, requires a mess of quotes in order to parse correctly, um, and has uh, far more of a, a nested sense to it than YAML does. So back to this important YAML file. Um, all you need again is a name description type core, and then new to versions Drupal core, a uh, version of Drupal core 8.7.7 or above, uh, is this optional um, property in YAML, core version requirement. And so the way I've written this, it, it says that this module is compatible with all versions of Drupal 8 and Drupal 9. Drupal 9 is coming this summer. Okay, so I told you that the .module file is a PHP file that it just includes procedural hooks. It's older. It uh, you know descends from uh, Drupal versions of lore. So there are no rules for this file. You can do whatever you want with it. Um, it is automatically run as a script. Uh, here's an example um, uh, of a popular hook that Drupalers will know by heart, which is the hook form alter hook. Among the hundreds of hooks that you could use, this is one that, that you probably know already, um, where you can alter uh, forms, you can add fields, you could change um, whether a, a particular field in a particular form, let's say the user form, is required or not. And th this is where you put your hooks. All right, just like Craft, you need to tell Drupal about your module. You run uh, this command, drush enable or drush en, uh, your module name. And you can install it manually in the admin. You can see that this is much easier than. Uh, getting craft to understand what your module is uh, because craft requires um, fancy footwork with composer. You don't need composer for, for Drupal. You can set it up that way. Um, and in, in fact, our agency, O3, uh, manages pretty much all of our Drupal projects, our new Drupal projects in composer now because it makes continuing integration or continuous integration uh, easier. Uh, it makes 
the file size smaller uh, so that all of your dependencies are in a, a vendor directory. Um, nonetheless, even if you were to, to manage your dependencies with, with Composer and Drupal, still the, the only thing that you need to install your, your custom module in Drupal is this one command. And uh, Drush is a command line interface uh, CLI that any Drupaler who wants to um, build custom modules should learn. Okay, WordPress. Here is all you need for WordPress. This is the easiest of them all. Uh, you'll see you need a directory and you need a file, a PHP file. It doesn't even have to be the same name. Yeah, so WordPress plugin development is the wild west. Um, if you wanna do anything uh, and if you, you don't care about particular rules, uh, you'll love WordPress. Uh, so yeah. All you need uh, for that file, right, uh, there's an error in the, the file name. It should say plugin CMS Philly slash CMS Philly dot PHP. So that's what we're looking at, CMS Philly dot PHP. Um, it has this doc block in it, and that's all that's required for WordPress to understand that you have a, uh, a plugin. And um, I'm actually not sure which of these are required, which of these lines are, are actually required in order to install it, uh, but if you just copy what's there um, and change the values, uh, WordPress will understand you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that's what I just said. If you uh, fill out the above doc block you and, and you find, or you will be able to find an install in the WP admin dashboard that everyone has known for almost 20 years. Okay, so that is how you uh, create plugins and modules. Uh, that is uh, the, the structure of the plugin slash module directory across these CMSs. Um, but that doesn't tell you to, uh, how to do anything useful. What I'm gonna, what I hoped to do uh, when I was proposing this talk was to um, go through several programming building blocks, uh, things that would uh, actually do something useful. But instead, I'm gonna go through one uh, because it turns out that one thing is quite intense. Um, Sure. So here's a important question. Uh, one that we actually had to answer in order to connect our O3 CLI to all of our sites, which was in each CMS, how can I get a page that says hello world? How can I get to hello world in each CMS? And the answer uh, is you need a route and you need the routes controller. And I'm about to talk about those two things. Okay. So here is our first and really only programming building block we're gonna be talking about, and that's routing and controllers. So I tried to um, give a, be a brief introduction to what lots of people call the MVC framework, the model view controller framework. Uh, and I find this diagram pretty useful. Um, on top, you have the route, this is your Domain name, and I've just chosen cmsphilly.com slash the route, which uh, since we would just want to uh, the route to say hello world, we're gonna call it hello. And what needs to happen on the server side in your CMS is a controller would respond to a get request to that route uh, and return HTML or some other kind of uh, markup um, with the words hello world. And in order for that to happen, you need uh, three things. Well, really, you need two things. One is a view, and two is a controller. And the controller in the middle is, at least for these three, MS, or these three CMSs, uh, organized by PHP. Uh, PHP is doing the logic that takes in the route and then returns your view or your words, hello world. Uh, and what I'm about to show you is how to get to Hello World in all three of the CMSs. So buckle in, starting with craft. You see the same structure we, we started with, the same plugin directory uh, we started with, the uh, craft CMS plugin directory, but now we have uh, placed within it a um, two things, a controller's subdirectory within source, and then a 
hello world controller dot php file within controllers. So as we were saying, all PHP in craft, all of it has to be in source uh, or has to be in the source directory. Um, <clears throat> controllers go in the controllers directory. And importantly, uh, for craft to understand your controller, it has to end in controller.php. Okay, let's look at this control or this hello world controller.php. What you'll notice um, to expand more on this PSR4 designation specification for auto loading is that this file is called hello world controller.php and the class inside of it is called hello world controller. And that is part of the specification to understand or to allow the composer autoloader within craft to understand your class, it has to be named the same as the file name. And there has to be only one class within the file. And so that's exactly what we have here. Namespaces, to reiterate, shorten file names. Here we have CMS Philly slash, uh, I guess that's forward slash controllers. And again, you have this PSR4 um, specification where um, Everything within CMS Philly is uh, contained within the, the source directory, and then everything within that is mapped folder to folder. And so you saw within source, there's this controllers directory, and within controllers, we have this class. And so that is um, pure PSR4. Controllers must extend this craft web controller or a child of that controller class. And this is kind of weird about Craft uh, that I haven't seen anywhere else, but it, it, it extends from its framework, Yi, in how controllers work in the Yi framework. This, um, uh, the CMS Philly uh, backslash uh, hello world backslash say hello action string translates to this action function. So everything after the word action in a public method within a controller be, uh, becomes a, um, uh, a snake case action string, like say hello. And so uh, a snake case say hello action translates to a, um, uh, a uh, camel case action say hello. So you can return a lot of things within a, a craft controller. Um, you can return a rendered template, raw text, or even redirection. All of those can be considered uh, you know, by a liberal understanding of MVC, a, um, a view. Uh, to to uh, make a, uh, a side point about Craft and Yi, uh, Yi is a hardcore MVC framework. Uh, Drupal is on Symfony. Symfony is inspired by MVC, but is more uh, interested in, you know, uh, modular components put together uh, to create um, a workable web framework. It, it cares more about the, um, the result than the purity of thought that goes into the result. Okay, you built the controller, you put it in the right place, you have, you have the right method names, now you have to tell Craft about your controller. Okay, you do this within that plugin.php file we talked about at the very beginning of all this code talk. Um, and the method that you do that in is init, public init. This is uh, what initializes every plugin that, that is registered with craft and within the init function you have um, you have to uh, subscribe to events you you, you uh, subscribe your event subscribers to various events uh, and you see this function event on uh, and then the event type um, in this case, it's event register CPU URL rules, and this is whenever the um, the site uh, tries to iterate through all the possible URLs, um, and you're subscribing to that particular event when it's iterating, and then giving it your route. And uh, so what it says on um, the line with the yellow text is, uh, the route hello is now controlled by your controller. Just to reiterate, uh, this is hello, the route mapping to a 
uh, an action verb uh, understanding um, that this is translated from CMS Philly, that's your, uh, your plugin. Uh, hello world is the name of the controller and it strips out the word controller and then say hello is the name of your method. Okay, Drupal. This is similar to craft in that you put your controller within the controller subdirectory within source. Only autoloaded PHP classes are in the source directory. If you want your class to be available to any other um, PHP in the entire system, you need to put it in source. Drupal will autoload it there. And unlike craft, you can name your controller anything. Um, I just appended the word controller to hello world because it's out of habit. It's what we do at O3. All right, here's that controller file. Um, same thing, we have the PSR4 uh, specification in action right now, hello world controller.php uh, um, provides a class called hello world controller. Namespaces, this is interesting about, P, uh, about Drupal. All namespaces must start with Drupal slash module name slash whatever else you want. And whatever else you want still has to be PSR4 compliant. So we named um, this folder controller with a capital C. So we have to name this namespace, the last part of it, controller with a capital C. All Drupal controllers must extend the Drupal core controller controller base or child class of that. And your callback function, unlike craft, can be named anything. Like say hello. You don't need the word action in it. And your return can either be plain text like this, hello world, uh, or any class that extends the response class coming from the uh, base framework symphony. You could return JSON. You could return a cacheable JSON response, for example. OK, now tell Drupal about your controller. Here is that, or here is a new YAML file. This is cmsphilly.routing.yaml. I talked earlier about cmsphilly.info.yaml. Symphony iterates through the various uh, modules that are registered with it and uh, looks for files named um, module name .routing .yaml and considers everything in that to be a route. So this is the Symphony route name. If you needed to refer to this route elsewhere in the system, you would refer to it this way, symphony. Oh, sorry, CMS Philly Hello World. Uh, important, uh, as you see on line four, this is telling the system where the controller is for this particular route. And the controller is named exactly what we have in the, uh, the Drupal um, namespace, uh, but prefixed with a, uh, a forward slash. And um, it is the full name, fully namespace class name with the met method separated by the double colon or called a PHPD scope resolution operator. You see the function at the end called say hello. That's exactly like the, the class method that is referring to the class method we just talked about. And uh, this can either be um, controlled by Drupal permissions, role, custom callback. If you wanted only administrators to have access to your Hello World page, this is where you would say requirements, and then within that uh, underscore role, colon, administrator. WordPress. Where to put the controller file? Trick wife head. There are no controllers in WordPress. It is the wild west. You could build your own MVC framework within your plugin. Uh, it's up to you. And I've seen a lot of plugin developers do that because it gives them peace of mind. Um, so, but the thing is, if you actually wanted to complete the task with WordPress, uh, you need some solution. So um, what you can do is create a, a template, call it a controller, and then call that template when anyone uh, you know, outside of your website requests a, a route. Um, so here we go. Uh, we have uh, the same um, 
uh, plugin uh, uh, directory path as before, WP, WP content, plugins, CMS Philly, and then within the uh, plugin directory, you have this template, hello-template.php. And anyone who's worked in WordPress would recognize uh, the following code, where you have your open PHP tag, your get header, um, which gets all the meta tags, uh, your echo hello world, and then get footer, um, and that's it. This is your controller. It is old school PHP. This is what we were used to in, in the early 2000s. Okay, tell WordPress about your template. Uh, so now we're back at this file, cmsphilly.php, your um, plugin file within your plugin directory. You would recognize your doc block at the beginning, and it has all the same information as we had before. Uh, the only difference here is that we have um, two new functions and one, or I guess one new function and two invocations of uh, functions. Okay. So what you have at the end is this action hook. So WordPress and Drupal both have procedural hooks. Um, uh, action hooks uh, are for when you want to uh, do something when an event happens. It's like an event subscriber. Whereas uh, filter hooks, which we're not talking about now, are for when you want to change something. And those are a lot like um, what we were talking about earlier with the hook form alter for Drupal, where you are changing the form itself. That's a filter hook. Here, this is much like uh, the craft init method within your craft plugin, um, uh, your craft plugin file, uh, where you are just simply reacting to the fact that WordPress has initialized, your CMS has initialized. And what that does is it calls um, the CMS Philly add route function. And that CMS Philly add route function invokes a different function called add rewrite rule. Um, this is a WordPress native function which connects custom routes uh, with either index PHP and then query strings, which is very standard, or something that's more direct um, and it, it connects, it is able to connect your route with a particular script or template. So what you see uh, on you know, the line within the function is this add rewrite rule um, mapping the regular expression that uh, um, is equivalent to slash hello, like all the other routes we've talked about, uh, and that calling on a so-called controller, but really a template, which has the same um, path as we were uh, talking about before, WP slash content slash plugin slash CMS Philly slash hello dash template dot PHP. Um, so this would, with this code, only these two files and these, uh, you know, um, you know what, are, what are they, like four lines of code? This is all you need in order to create a WordPress uh, route. Now you can do use other things. Um, uh, WordPress recently, uh, or in, in recent versions, uh, um, provides a, a REST API router. And so that's if you want to expose a REST API. Uh, if um, you have external services that are looking for particular data from your, um, your website and um, the methods are very similar to this. It, it's just a few lines of code. And instead of mapping just any old route to any old template, you are mapping routes to particular JSON endpoints. Okay. Um, I wanna say one more thing, which is WordPress is much easier than the uh, other um, frameworks if you're developing plugins for them. Um, but, uh, you know, um, there is a cost freedom in that uh, you have no guidance as to how to actually create these things um, uh, the best way. And so this is why you see uh, people trying to recapitulate an MVC framework within the plugin itself and an auto loader within the plugin itself all over the WordPress uh, uh, plugin scene. Um, so this might seem easy, but it, uh, um, brushes developers the wrong way. 
Okay. So I'm not going to go into this too deeply, but when you're interested, if you're ever interested in converting your custom plugin or custom module to something that you can contribute to uh, an open source community or um, actually start selling it, whether it's WordPress or Craft, uh, you need to know how to do that. And I've, I've included and, and will um, uh, expose this presentation, which has the slide in it and the links uh, to um, CMS Philly after I'm done, which is very soon. Um, but uh, one thing I'll say is that Drupal is different than the other two in that you can publish your module without anyone reviewing it in Drupal. Um, you can publish it. Uh, it can be available for download. That's not the same about Craft. That's not the same about WordPress. Uh, both Craft and WordPress have um, uh, plug-in uh, stores and you submit them to Craft, you submit them to WordPress, they review it, not necessarily for security, but more so that it, it abides by um, their standards. And then they, they put it on their respective marketplaces. Whereas Drupal, you can publish it for everyone, uh, but you need to have, you need to go through a, an additional review process if you wanted it to um, be uh, security approved. Um, so, but that's something to look into later. And that's it. That's all I want to say. That's a lot. I know. Uh, it was basically, if you're, uh, the idea was lots of people know one CMS really well, but not necessarily, uh, you know, knowing how to translate that knowledge to all the other CMSs. And so hopefully this was an introduction to two CMSs that you might not have known. Um, one thing I'll say is I'm leading engineering for a, um, a group of volunteers uh, that is, uh, you know, working to connect um, uh, groceries with COVID vulnerable people in New York and now soon to be elsewhere. And if you know Drupal and are looking to help, please let me know. But otherwise, I'm open for any questions. Matthew, is there anything like uh, pluginfactory.io for Drupal and WordPress to help you kind of scaffold? Um, plugins or additions to that stuff. Yeah, so you're talking about crafts plugin, yep. plugin yep. factory, right? Uh, yeah, so so the I really like that one. Um, one of our plugins was, uh, or I used that for my first plugin ever, and then I didn't really need it anymore um, for for craft. Uh, but I don't know one for WordPress, and it doesn't really there doesn't need to be one for WordPress, right? Because it is the Wild West; you don't need many files to get things done. Um, whereas Drupal has something called Drupal Console, which is a, a CLI that you could uh, type things like uh, console generate module, and it will provide all the code that you want and then walk you through various steps. You know, do you want controllers? Do you want um, uh, models? Do you want um, forms? And uh, yeah, so, so, but I wouldn't necessarily trust the code generator to uh, to do what you want. Makes sense. Those are very good uh, building blocks though for someone coming into, you know, new to Absolutely. plug and developing. Thank you. Thank you.